Are we starting? Yeah. We already did Give all that stuff. Give us one more. No, we already did. I want us to do the, is it recording? It would be very funny. It is very funny. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to the OBC podcast. I am Corey. This is John. Hi. Nice to meet you. How again. are you? Doing great, man. Is that coffee I made you really good? It's super, super good. It's fantastic. It's very thick, and it's very wonderful. Yes. Thank you. It's 65 degrees, so I'm acting like it's cold. Um, so on Sunday, Dustin continued in our series in Hebrews, but it was kind of the topic of solid food versus milk. And so while listening, we, we got to be out of town, which was yeah, nice. Fantastic and be, hiking. We were on a mountain during church. Sorry, guys. It was 37 degrees and it raining. Was a, it was a, a holy experience, though. It was. So it was wonderful. But... Uh, I love our pastor. He did a great job and talking about he always gets the hard ones in Hebrews. <laughs> like I got the easy one the week before. Um, but this was more a question of solid milk and uh, not solid milk. That's cheese, I think, or it's gross. curd. We have milk and solid food and kind of the difference. He, he talked about we are as close to God as we want to be, which yeah. is an H.P. Charles quote, and kind of talking about we grow when we want to grow. Right. Um, but as I was reading that, he gave some some tips of how, you know, what is milk, what is solid food, and how we can grow. So I thought the best thing we could do um, is to give resources for people on a lot of different things, all the way from how to just read your Bible as a beginner, all the way up to, you know, what, what should we listen to, what kind of podcasts or sermons, how do we study the Bible, and kind of give some books or recommendations for beginner, intermediate, and advanced um, and it's really exciting because I like all of this stuff, and so do you. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think for both of us, resources have been just such a huge... Yeah. For, I mean, really for anybody, resources yeah. is a great way you grow. And some people, before we get started, some people have the argument that they would read nothing except the Bible. Why do you think that we should actually do something more than just read the Bible? Why do we have that stance? Because there's smarter people than me yeah. who also read the Bible, and they write down right. what they've learned. I mean, there's there's PhDs in every field. We could read the same article, and my right. synopsis to you, you'd be like, Corey, you're not as smart as that guy. Yeah, like, um, and I think it denies, it denies the communal aspect of the Trinity. We were created in the image of God. That means we need each other. Anybody who says, like, I don't need anybody, yeah, I just need... True. It's like, no, you were created in, a, in the image of a communal God... So for you to learn from other people is actually a godly thing. Maybe yeah. I mean, obviously, God is not learning new things, but for you to experience what yeah. other people are experiencing, that's that's a, a great thing. So I, I, I feel I agree like, with that. yeah, I feel like it's a great it's a great understanding of I don't know everything, mm -hmm. and I'm also not perfect at reading the Bible, mm -hmm. and I need somebody else's help if they're yeah. further along than me. Now, there's all obviously safeguards you have to have because there are a bunch of crazy people out there. And that's kind of why we're doing this podcast is we want to help give good resources. Yeah. Over time, you get what's called your spiritual palate, where you can taste that something is off about someone's theology. And so as you grow with these resources and as you grow in your, your faith and in your walk with the Lord, you can re instantly tell like, there's something off about this. You may yeah. not know what exactly, but over time you'll learn what that thing and is. And we just kind of talked about that before we hit play of the, you know, some of the, um, you know, spiritual formation books we read like in college, right, right. and we're like, I don't know, I don't know I'm if that holds there. up. <laughs> yeah. But it's still the the more I grow in my faith and maturity, the more even when you know something's like, eh, you, it's almost the filter of like, you have you have grace for some stuff. You absolutely just kind of know what to stay away from, but then you can you, know, you can grab stuff. Yeah. You can grab good things. I even say right. this. I like to read a lot of, I read a lot of like secular leadership books yeah. a lot, and I'll talk about how they're accidentally biblical. Right. And that's how they work. Is like when you when you're a leader like yeah. this, I'm like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, God designed yeah. the world to work a certain way. When other <laughs> yeah. people do that, it works out. Yeah, well it's done. Fun. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, the purpose of this is so that we can give you resources of how to grow and. And even as John said, I was thinking of that, we need each other to grow. I think that's one of the reasons why we even, like Dustin preaches the bulk of the time, but you get to preach, I get to preach over yeah. the summer, Josh, Don, Bob, all preach. And that's a good thing because if we preach the same sermon, all, all, all six of those guys I just said, if we had the same passage with the same topic, right. it would we would learn different things if we listened to all six of them right. because we have different perspectives, we have different backgrounds, um, and it's good to learn. It's good to have a different take from different people yeah. and learn. 
that we trust. And so and for we, some we reason it's, it's weird that somebody will say something that's already been said, but because it's a different oh person, gosh. you pick it up for some reason. Yeah. I don't understand why that happens. The brain is funny. And the word of God is living and active. And every time I read it, I learn something new. And, Absolutely. Um, so as we talk about reading the Bible, beginner, intermediate, advanced, I want to remind people, like, it's always good to start with a prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes because he's, he's, leading us and correcting us and uh, illuminating the Word right. of God to us all the time. So um, so let's just talk about reading the Bible. And so for a beginner, somebody who's like, I would love to, I don't even know where to start. I'm overwhelmed by this. I brought the biggest Bible I have <laughs> for some reason. It was just in my bag and weighs 50 pounds. For a beginner person who just, Dustin said, like talked about there's apps, there's all kinds of stuff. What's the easiest way to read a Bible? I mean, the easiest way to read a Bible is get a physical Bible yes. and start reading. I, I always say go to the book of Mark. You know, Mark is, is just as dead set on getting to the cross as quickly as possible. It gives you the best, in my mind, the best overview mm-hmm. of the ministry of Jesus. Yeah, it's compact. Um, yeah, it's very compact. And so if this is your first time, like, that, that's kind of a great book to start in, and then I would go to John after that. But so once you get your physical Bible, the question is which... Uh, translation somebody should use. I think our church does a really great job. Dustin preaches from the CSB. That Christian is Christian Standard Bible. The Christian Standard Bible. That is like perfectly in the middle of it's still accurate and it's also readable. And yeah. and so that's a kind of a good spot. But if you if you can't go out right now and get a Bible, there's a bunch of great Bible apps. Do you kind of have any favorite Bible apps that people Um have? yeah, there is the Bible app that Life Church made a long time ago and it's fantastic. Yeah. Um I use Logos cuz we use that for preaching and stuff and if anybody wants to dive into that and teach us how to use it, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> um but the Bible app is wonderful and yeah. So when you said, you know, go to Mark in a physical Bible, I, it's my first time reading my Bible. Like, what amount of time, amount of content, what do I shoot for? Yeah, so for me, I like to, especially with something like the Book of Mark, I like to go with, we talk about this a lot, pericope by pericope. Or paragraph. Paragraph. Yeah, uh, where it has the cool little yeah, header. the headers. Yeah. So I like to do that specifically for something like that that's like a highlight reel. You know, Mark is like a highlight reel. Yeah. I just do that for a day, sit in it, read it, read it five or six times. Like try to get an overview of what it is. So there's mm-hmm. a there's a process called SOAP. You get scripture, you observe what's in the text, then you see like is there any promises, any any sins I need to put to death, any mm. any kind of Christ likeness I need to put on in the text or, or attitudes I need to put on, and then prayer. So scripture, observation, application, okay. prayer. Okay. Because without prayer none of these things we're trying to apply are going to happen. And so when you're reading like the book of Mark, look in it, see what, what characters are there. Is there any kind of timeless truth that you need to apply to your life? And then pray that the Holy Spirit would apply that yeah. to your life. Because we want to read, you want to take in all the information in your Bible, but it's not a textbook, really. Right. We can't go to it like we're studying. It is, God uses it. It says it pierces the marrow. Like yeah. it gets down deeper in our souls and our beings than we'll ever know and transforms us. And he uses that. So, okay. Um, intermediate kind of like for people who are reading their Bible and they're like, okay, like I want to, I'm doing that. Yeah. I read Mark. Like what's a, what's a next jumping point for medium Bible? hundred percent. You have to get a study Bible. Okay. A study Bible is really great because at the beginning of every chapter, it'll tell you kind of, what's called like the redemptive history. So like, where does it sit in the storyline of redemptive history, which yeah. means like when Jesus came and what, what this teaches, it gives us like what literary genre is it? Because you don't read a Psalm, which is a poem. You don't read that the same way that you do a book of the law. Like there are different yeah. ways to read different books of the Bible. Um, and it gives you like, who was the author? What were the people like? Yeah. Because as much as we like to think, the Bible was written to us. It was not. Mm-hmm. It was written to a certain people at a certain time. And so if we can understand their lives and their situation and what was going on contextually, it's really helpful. Yeah. So that's what's great with a study Bible. It also goes through each passage and just helps you understand it a little bit more. I yes. would say maybe get a few different types of study Bibles. That yeah, way you're not you're not sitting with one person's thoughts and interpretations of yeah. it. Um, but I think like instrumental to my faith was getting an ESV study Bible. Yeah. Um, Wayne Gruden was one of the main... Uh, translators with all that, um, and and it's just so helpful because a lot of study Bibles too will have articles in it that help you understand yeah. maybe historically what's going on or are there different arguments behind a certain passage, mm-hmm. 
Um, and so for intermediate, man, I think getting a, a good study Bible yeah. is the way to go. And again, the CSB has a study Bible. Yeah. They have men's and women's ones. Mm. I haven't looked at them, but like that, that is solid. Um, there's an NIV study Bible that I have. Um, I don't remember which one it's called. There's several. My favorite and the one I like buy people when I disciple them is the ESV study Bible because it's like white and orange and hardback. Yeah. But it's fantastic. Yeah. And I will say a tip. Yeah. I have that that one in like really nice leather calf. Mm-hmm. Always get a Bible that when you look at it, you want to pick it up. You yeah. want to smell it. You want to hold on to it because it's such incredible leather. So I like. Well, that's we a good are, transition. Yeah. To, I'm going to show you guys. I think if I can get it on here, how I read my Bible. Um, this is a wide margin Bible, and I want to let you know that you can write and draw all over your Bible. But I'm just going to hold this up and see. This is what I'm on like today. And as you can see, it's Might covered in highlights, <laughs> and I don't know if you can see it, but you can see that it's whatever. But every year, I try to read the Bible through in a year, um, and so this is the second year I got this Bible. My mom bought me this Bible, uh, Last Sweet Pastor Lisa. Appreciation, and it's a Schuyler Bible, and if you ever want to nerd out about Bibles, come find <laughs> yeah, us. Let's talk. Um, but last year, I started it, and I used a blue pen and wrote through it. And this year, as I'm going through it, I have a green pen Mm. and I've highlighted verses that are important for me. Like right here, the Sermon on the Mount, I highlighted the Beatitudes, but every time I go through and it helps me in a more advanced way of reading as helps me pay attention. I write prayers. I write applications in the margin of just things. And I think in my head one day, CJ or Maggie will grab this and care to read what their dad read. I even ask questions in there that I want to go back and find out because I'm still learning. Yeah. There's some stuff that's hard uh, to do, but the important thing is is reading. Um, so physical Bible is good. Using the Bible app is fantastic. Um, if you, I'm trying to think, like beginner, there are little, you know, like three day challenges about a topic that you can read. I think are good as devotionals. There's lots of devotionals on there. Intermediate would be read a book of the Bible, and even if you want to take it a little more, there's read the New Testament in a year. Yeah. Advanced would be read the whole Bible in a year, Yeah, which, which is, is hard. Is, I mean, it and is, but, and it's, easy. but it's not... It sounds enormous, but yeah. you're only reading for like 20 minutes a day. Yeah, it it's really not, is. It's not like some crazy or four hours a day reading the Bible. I do mm-hmm. know people who've done read the Bible in 90 days, and that's crazy. That's, so, that's beyond advanced. <laughs> my friend, Pastor Benja in Kenya, read the Bible a month multiple oh times last year, and he's just like put up his Bible reading plan. He's like, Numbers and Deuteronomy <laughs> yeah. today. I'm like, yeah. oh my goodness. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> so, um, and uh, the one I'm reading right now, the Bible reading plan is called the McShane one, so which good. is you read the Old Testament, once through the year, and you read the New Testament twice, mm-hmm. which is so you read four chapters in four different places. Yeah, another one is Navigators, which is a really good one that you can find on the app because that you read for 25 days a month and it gives you like catch up days, days, yeah, which is always helpful because because you all, yeah, and that's the purpose. If you fall behind, the purpose is like not yesterday, it's yeah. like just get in your Bible today. And, and, and I will say. I'm known to read a year-long Bible plan in like two and a half years because I want to go slow through it. Yeah, I don't. I don't like true. reading large chunks. Yeah. You know, I've I've read through the Bible quickly yeah. once. I think that's important for everybody to do. But if you're reading for depth, sometimes you can take those same plans and just you know read the Old Testament one yeah. day, really dig through it, and then the next day read the New Testament. So. So that's a good segue. The next thing we want to talk about is how to study the Bible. And I think the beginner way that you talked about is get a study Bible. Mm -hmm. It's the easiest way to read. When you have a question, you pop down to that verse and see what it says and how. um, So somebody, you know, does that and then wants to take it one step further. What are some tools or how would you tell them to study the Bible? Yeah, my favorite tool is Logos, Logo or Logos, if you want to be a nerd about it. Um, It means the word. Yeah, so I, I love that. App. Uh, here's the thing. It costs two or three hundred bucks. They have a free one. They do have a free one. It it's got some great. Stuff, it's got yeah. a great tools though. Still, but people are willing to spend two or three hundred bucks on the dumbest things. Mm-hmm. Why not spend it on a single purchase that's going to last you for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. That's going to enrich your spiritual life incredibly. So the Logos Bible app because. There's tools where you can learn Greek and Hebrew. Like, you can learn the yeah. alphabet, you can learn Greek and Hebrew words, so that's really fun. It pronounces everything for you. 
you can do where where you have on one line you have the English and another line you have the Greek or Hebrew, and then as you highlight over that line, as you drag your your cursor yeah. over it, it shows you which word that is. That's super helpful. That might be advanced, John. I thought we were on advanced. Intermediate. Oh, it interme- doesn't matter. It's the What's same. What's the difference? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. For studying the Bible is yeah. Oh, I thought we moved on to advanced. My bad. Um, intermediate stuff, I think, is adding supplication things like different podcasts, different okay. teachers. Um, for there's a lot of seminaries that have like a uh, survey of New Testament. I think that's like a good intermediate thing to do. You can buy survey of New Testament or Old Testament. That way, you just get a better sense of like the the narrative of the books. Um, intermediate, another one, the Bible Project. If you go on on yeah. YouTube and type in their stuff, it's just got really great visual overviews of for every book, book and, of the Bible, yeah. or themes in the Bible. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like different those are fun, different intermediate things that you can do with with that. So, what about for yeah. you? What do you think? Yeah, for Bible study, I think is getting, you know, finding a commentary you like. So, a commentary is literally people commenting on the Bible yeah. and studying and breaking it down. Um, and so there's a lot that I like. We use that Logos app um, or Logos system. Um, that's where I have, it's basically a digital library yeah. of commentaries because it's cheaper. And you can just like, I'll add, I'll buy myself a couple or whatever I need. I end up finding the ones I like. But um, growing up, my mom and dad had the J. Vernon McGee, like, J. Like Vernon set. McGee. Yes. And he was like a pastor who had a radio show. And so there's some audio clips, but it, he's like a straight down the middle, like easy to understand and apply the Bible. And I, that was the first time I, when I was studying the Bible of just popping, like getting those off the shelf. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know Bob loves J. Vernon McGee. I don't know who doesn't love J. Vernon McGee. Just he's, like, he's fun. Just listen to him talk. It's fun. So he's a good, like intermediate, like just to buy, if you want to read through Romans, like Buy the one of his that's on Romans. Um, Warren Wearsby is another great yeah. one for intermediate, and it's not super in depth. So I, I've learned so much. I think my grandma bought me one of his on the Book of James. Yeah, and it wasn't over the top. It was just helping me, you know, bridge yeah. the gap between, you know, for me to be challenged but also apply it. And he's a great one. Um, yeah, and then advanced is just once you find. You read multiple commentaries of people you like, right. and from different backgrounds. Too, yeah, you know it, that is good. Um, yeah, because it's it's easy to find someone you like and stay in that lane, but it's also good. You know, other people are smart too, and yes. it's fun to hear their thoughts. Yes. You might not agree with them, but they yes. if they have a biblical reason why they believe what they believe, it's yeah. helpful. To and them. as you grow in maturity, you can read other people and be like, "Well, I don't, sure. I don't agree with that. I don't see, I don't see that." But you can be challenged. I think one of the best ways you can learn is to be challenged sure. by a, a view you have. Yeah. And study more, and that's why we, you know, study the Bible. And it's, you might be like, well, I don't, I don't know about that. And that, that's the good thing about why we study the Bible is because the Bible is true. Mm-hmm. And just because we don't like some stuff, or we're like, well, I don't yeah, know about it's that. A problem well, with me, not with the Bible. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So that's studying the Bible, which we put those reading and studying the Bible up top because that's the most important thing. Right. That if you only have time to do that, do that. Um, now let's talk about some books. We'll do beginner, intermediate, advanced books that you would recommend for people to grow from, you know, milk up to solid food. Sure. Um, sure. So what's some good Be- beginner, beginner stuff? Beginner, man, a book that I've really loved for quite a while is the book Explicit Gospel by Matt Chandler. It just gives a very simple to understand explanation of the gospel and how mm-hmm. God is not waiting for you to be some better person than you are for him to love you. He loves you, and not only that, he likes you where you're at, but his plan is to make you more holy and to to make you more like This is the will of God, your sanctification. Yeah, right. He wants you to grow. But it's just so helpful because a lot of us grow up thinking that we have to impress God, and we don't. Mm -hmm. We we have to come to the Lord with our sin and with our, our troubles, and then he begins to sanctify us, which is this process of becoming more like Jesus. He sanctifies us to be more like Christ, of who we, who in our minds were like, I should really be that way. Yeah, yeah. like we should grow in that direction. But yeah. that's not the thing that gets the Lord to love you. So what yeah. about for you, beginner books? That was a tough one for me because all the one, I'm trying to think of all the ones where I was really falling in love with reading. I don't know if they stand up now. Sure. Um, but another one you said that I haven't even read is Habits of Grace mm-hmm. by David Mathis. Um, and I, I don't know if it's beginner or intermediate. You should just read it. 
but it's Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. Yeah. We read that as a staff before. Were you here when we I read wasn't. it? I wasn't. I read no, it once so a maybe year. 20, I, yeah. I read it every year because it's that good. Chrissy and I have read it together. I've read it like three times now. Um, it is all based on the one sentence where Jesus tells us about himself. Yeah. He says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. That's the only time he tells you about like his heart. His yeah. heart. And they're really short chapters. Like some of them are, you know, like between three and six pages per chapter. But it just breaks that down and talks about Jesus and talks about his love for us. And really, and, and it uses some of the Puritans, a lot of Thomas Goodwin, yep. who is definitely in the advanced column, um, <laughs> to do that. But it's a really good book to grow you. Um, what other intermediate stuff? Man, intermediate is hard because you really have two categories of of book where it's because everybody's trying. Yeah, maybe to, like, it's just milk and solid food. Yeah, like, so. I mean, honestly, like everybody is trying to write. It, they say like write for like a seventh grade reading level yeah. if you're trying to sell books because otherwise people won't read it. Yeah. Um, other great books, Desiring God was a humongous yeah. book in my by development. Piper. Yeah, by John Piper. Um, Prodigal God by Tim Keller was a, a really oh, big one. For that's me. a fantastic book for it's even short beginner. Too. Short, yeah. Beginner really read short. Prodigal God, which is about the prodigal son story yeah. and uh, the parable, not yeah. the story. Um, yeah. So beginner, intermediate. I mean, like stuff that probably does not hold up anymore. I read Blue Like Jazz. A lot, I did too, and it, it I loved it, and it's probably even, horrible in yeah, its theology. It's not like a spiritual formation book. Right. It's just a story about right. a Christian. Ragamuffin Gospel was a fun one. I, if going back reading it, I'm sure it has a lot of problems, but it was really helpful for me when I was, you know, a baby Christian. Yeah. Uh, I I read Crazy Love by yeah. Francis Chan, <laughs> yeah. but I think even when I read it, I got to the end and I was like, this is either redundant or I'm like, mm, I don't like where this is going. Uh-huh. Interesting. But, so, but then in the advanced section, for me, the Puritans are really great to read. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, The Glory of Christ by John Owen was the single most transformative book that I've ever read. Um, Mortification yeah. of Sin is also a great one. Yeah. Do you have any, like, great... Like, there's just a lot. Thomas Goodwin, um, that, like, that's where Gentle and Lowly comes from. But when we say the Puritans, it was a... The thing about the Puritans that were amazing is that they would write a book about a verse. A single verse. A whole book. Yeah, it's crazy. It's amazing. Yeah. And even, like, more in the advanced thing, I read uh, Jonathan Edwards' The Religious Affections, mm-hmm. and it was literally a treatise on, like, one topic yeah. um, about, you know, like, the fruit of salvation. Another one that might be, well, two more that are in the intermediate and advanced that would be great. One is Knowing God mm-hmm. by J.I. Packer, which is about, I think it's like 25 chapters, but it's it's almost an intro to systematic theology. Yeah. Of It talks about God, it talks about fo- like following Him, and there's like study guides that go with it. I did that with our young adult leadership team um, in 2022, and it was amazing. Yeah. Um, that's a great one. Also, Delighting in the Trinity by Michael Reeves might be one of my favorite books I've mm-hmm. read. It's technically, it's kind of short, but you got to read it slow right. because the Trinity, I right. read it and it still blows my mind. Um, but those are some good ones. And again, there's a ton of good books. There's a ton of bad books. Right. So just ask people that you trust. Ask yeah. your Bible study teacher. Ask one of us. Yeah, and put it in the comments. If you yeah. want to know, like ask, ask about it. We'll, yeah. we'll answer. Hopefully. And th- there's a, yeah, there's, there's a lot. Um, so, you know, we r- want to read our Bible. We want to study our Bible. We can read books. What about, uh, you know, sermons? If people want to listen to more sermons, assuming you've already listened to the sermon here at or your at church. your local yeah, church, right. we do believe, like, your pastor yeah. preaches for his flock. Like, it doesn't mean he... And he like, works hard at it. Yes. Give him give him the joy of knowing yes. that you listened. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, man, and even thinking about this series is my, like... I can't remember being more excited about a series yeah. like we weren't here on Sunday, but I was so excited to listen back to it, yeah. and it was fantastic. I'm going through Hebrews, so who else? Sermons. I listen to a lot of old John Piper sermons. If you can't get the gist, I like John Piper a lot. And which they have a they have short ones that they came out with. I think it's called Light and Truth, mm-hmm. where like they that. break them down to like twenty minute. But yeah. they're from like I listened to one 80s. on the yeah. yeah. The weekend, like the Sunday before I was born. I'm like, it was like February 28th, 1988. Yeah. I was like, I was born that Wednesday. Yeah. This is weird. I like Dane Ortland too. Yeah. Great, great teacher. So gentle and lowly, the guy who wrote that. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just, it's, he's yeah. a great preacher. 
Uh, H.P. Charles is good. Love H.P. Charles. He's a, like, leads a Baptist church in Jacksonville. He's fantastic. He's been preaching since he was, yeah. like, oh, like 11 right. or something. I like Joby Martin a lot <laughs> yeah. at uh, 1122 Church. So there's there's just a lot of yeah. great preachers out there. Alistair would, Begg, if you want dude, a Scottish accent. Yeah. I mean, Sinclair Ferguson. There's a bunch of just incredible teaching out there that, yeah. that people should get into. Old um, Tim Keller sermons. He's my favorite Presbyterian. Yeah. So. He's sure. Presbyterian. I'm just D.A. Saying. Carson, great. Yeah. He's also a good commentator. Yeah. Yeah. His uh-huh. uh, new, I can't remember the name of his, his commentary. It's it's a single volume, really, really good commentary. I'll, I'll nice. hopefully put it in the link below. <laughs> we have a lot to link. I know. Yeah. What about uh, any other stuff like podcasts or videos on YouTube? Yeah. You, you love the YouTube. Jonathan Adams Ministries. John Adams <laughs> Ministries. Yeah. Uh, I actually started posting music there. Um, yeah, I so there's a lot of really, really bad YouTube. So I would say yeah. s- steer clear unless you are... People just hit play. Yeah, unless like you us. know for sure somebody <laughs> is is solid. Um, so some good YouTube. Uh, Mike Winger is is a great middle of the road. He's not, not... So smart. Yeah, so smart. Not reform, not Arminian. Like just dead set middle of the road. Uh, that's really helpful. Um, some friends of mine. Jeremy Collins and Dean Lentini, two great channels. Um, but I, I would say for the most part, uh, I would not go to YouTube for yeah. my teaching unless it's a pastor who is at a church who has uh, you know elders and people around him who can say, hey, you're off your rocker. Can you stop? Yeah, that's good. Because um, there's just too many people there that are... There needs to be accountability. Yeah, there's just too like, many people that are in their basement hitting record, and yeah. it's like, you probably should not have done that. Well, so, that's a good warning. Like, yeah, it's, but helpful to but like we said earlier bible project that's mm-hmm. really helpful um yeah what about you got any one of my favorite podcasts like i i'm very cyclical like mm-hmm. i'll listen to music and then i'll listen to like audiobooks and then i'll listen to podcasts and yeah. like just because right. i get burned out um but when i do listen to podcasts i love the knowing faith podcast yeah. and they've been putting stuff out and they've done like whole series on books they do little snippet that's how i learned about no um the Trinity. the Trinity book yeah. that I talked about is because they talked about the Trinity and we're yeah. like, you have to read this. And right. all three of the people on there are seminary grads They're who smart. are very smart. One of them's a doctor. Um, Jen Wilkin is on it and she's great perspective. It's yeah. so helpful to have a female perspective. Yes. In that. Especially she's so smart yeah. um, and such a good teacher. Um, so that's a really good one for podcasts. Um, any other random tools, even things you do to help, like uh, you're a parent helping your children yeah. follow Jesus. New what? City Catechism. That for me is the most single most helpful child development tool yeah. is the New City Catechism. They've got these songs in it that are just when the you worst. When you select children's mode. When you select children's yeah. mode. It's literally the worst possible music in the world and it's, kids uh, love it. So New City Catechism, it teaches you catechism, you know, you're just going through basic well, faith. People hear the word catechism and they just might think they don't know what that is or think of Catholicism. Like what what does catechism it, mean? It's just the basic truths of the faith. Yes. And you're just you're just going through like if you can hold these these thoughts mm-hmm. and these truths, then you've got a pretty solid yeah. understanding of the whole of, yeah. of the faith. And so the pillars of doctrine and yeah. dogma of what we believe about God. Yeah. And yeah, I just started it's probably too early because CJ's three. So we started doing it, and there's 52 of them, and it asks a question, and then it has an answer, gives you the scripture, it gives you commentary if you want, and then it has the song, but he always just like, can we sing the song? Mm -hmm. Um, But we just do one, like, there's 52 of them, so we just do one all seven days of the week to try to, like, that's what, you know, I think Sesame Street and Blues Clues did, is they just played the same one, and that's how kids learn. Right. If you have younger kids, the Little Bear Bible is my favorite because what it does is it gives you an, uh, the meta narrative, so the whole of the scripture. It gives you just you know my my daughter can tell you the flow of the entire Bible because <laughs> of that seven page you know yeah. cardboard Bible, little bear Bible. It's okay. awesome. Yeah, very good. There's also the one that Kevin DeYoung did, the greatest the greatest storybook story. Bible. That one's it's beautiful. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the designers are incredible on that Bible. There's also the um, Jesus storybook Bible. That's the mm-hmm. one where There's every a... it shows how every story is about Christ. That to me is probably the most helpful Bible for a kid because it it teaches them that the whole of the Scripture is about Jesus, yeah. not just the New Testament. Yeah. So that's that's great to look at the read the Old Testament looking for yeah. and it shows the story you, of redemption. Yeah, it's amazing. The Scarlet Thread. Hey, there you go. 
Yeah, and just read anything yeah. Spurgeon wrote. Yeah. I just read so old So back sermons, to yeah. books. A good starter book, if you want an old dead guy, All of Grace by, by Charles Spurgeon is unbelievable. Yes. And it's okay. so simple. It's wonderful. And when we say old dead guy, we say that, but there is something going back to how to be, how to be wise in what you're reading. There are certain people who lived and died... And we're like, faithful. And you faithful. Know it. Yeah, like, they, they ended the race. They're good. <laughs> like, even, like, I loved reading Tim Keller and listening to his sermons while he was, like, here, but he went through cancer, praising Jesus the till way. the final end, and we know, yeah, like, you can look at his life and see, see the fruit. The fruit yeah. We yeah. can see the faithfulness. And so when we say old dead guys, like, it's good. There's plenty of people now who are good that we... we you just don't know. Yeah. Like, and There's it's guys just, I loved in yes. my 20s that have gone off the rails. Yes, absolutely. We've seen it a lot, unfortunately. Um, so it, it's just good to be wary. But the purpose of all this, uh, church family and anybody watching this, is to grow. Like, God desires your sanctification. We've been empowered by the Holy Spirit to grow. And we start at milk. And, yeah, if you're starting at milk and you're a baby Christian, that is okay. Yeah, keep going. Do not go to the advanced stuff yet because you might just get frustrated. Um, but just start reading your Bible, even yeah. a few minutes a day, paragraph a day. Um, but wherever you're at, if you're beginner, intermediate, advanced, keep taking those steps. Keep learning because um, there's always stuff to learn. Um, and we're here as a resource if you want to ask any day, uh, like, I would love to answer. What else can I read? Yeah, that, let us that know would make in the me comments. so happy. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know your questions for sure. So uh, we love you. We'll see you on Sunday or whenever we see you. Bye. Bye.